Hello, welcome back into my studio. So I am doing the promised video on how to make these um, fabric bowls. So I'm showing how I made them and the do's and don'ts of what I learned from making them. So um, we're gonna get started on that. I'm just gonna jump right in. So the supplies you will need is Elmer's glue. I happen to get clear just because uh, that's what I was able to find at my local Walmart, but you can certainly use white. The white dries clear anyway, but you will need Elmer's glue. Um, you will need a water bottle or some sort of container to make your, um, your bowl in. So this is going to be the, the mold. So it's sort of like the mold. Okay. So I used a water bottle. I'm going to just cut this a little bit lower. Um, now it doesn't have to be a water bottle. It could be, uh, if you have like a milk carton or that sort of thing, it, you want something that's flexible. Okay. So that you can easily, you know, squeeze it and everything to help get it out. That'll help you get it out. Okay. You'll also need a paintbrush or any kind of a brush, um, a container to pour the glue in and scissors and of course some fabric scraps now the smart thing to do would be to pre-cut your fabric scraps so that you're not having to stop and do that but i'm i'm not that type of person i won't do that um some may already just be cut anyway and that's you know bonus for me but i'm not going to take the time to pre-cut mine um these are just how i bought them like this but you would need them to be smaller so keep in mind that whatever um, where you cut it, this is not going to be the full height of the bowl. So it's actually going to be lower than that. So keep that in mind. If you're wanting your bowl to be this high, then you want to cut up about an inch above that. Okay. Actually cut some water in that still. Okay. So first things first, getting right in is we're going to open up our glue and we're going to pour it into our container. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, do the bottom. Now, with the first layer of fabric, you have two options here. You can either with the first layer of fabric, place the fabric face down where the fabric pattern is face down so that when this dries and you pull the the water bottle or whatever you're using out you can see the pattern from inside the bowl so that is option one option two is if you don't care about what the inside looks and you just place the fabric pattern on the outside okay and this is with regards to the first layer of fabric, because you will do more than one layer. Now, the first times I made these bowls, I did the fabric pattern on the inside, so I don't know if you could see that, um, but I, to me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, I mean, especially when you're putting stuff in it, it just, it doesn't matter to me. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, but again, it's about personal preference. So if you want to see a pretty pattern, the pretty fabric patterns on the inside, do the first layer of fabric with the pattern face down. Otherwise, you can just do it this way, okay? So I'm just gonna get, the first piece should be the bottom of your container. And what you wanna do is make sure you cut a piece that will do the bottom. So I've got this piece of fabric. It is actually from an old summer dress of mine. And I'm going to just take off a bit. Okay. So we have, there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to take my brush, get my scissors out of the way. Your hands will get full of glue. Expect that. So, and that was one of the reasons why it ideally, if you're smart, you will pre-cut your fabric scraps because your hands are going to get all gummy and goopy with all the, the glue and tacky and it's just going to stick and become a big, huge pain. But I'm not going to do that. So, because I like to make things difficult. 
Um, or you can just say I'm a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being a rebel and I'm going to, you know, go against the rules of pre-cutting the fabric. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, so I'm just going to apply a generous but not, you know, overly saturated thing of paint. I mean, paint. I'm so used to seeing paint with glue. And then I'm going to put the fabric down and make sure it's nice and smooth and put that all the way around. Okay, so now this you're going to want to um, take the brush, dip it in the glue again, and you are going to want to put a layer of glue on the outside because the glue is acting as, has two jobs. It has to ha act as an, an adhesive for the fabric, but it's also going to help harden the fabric so that your bowl is nice and hard. Okay, now I will come back to the bottom again later when I want to add some more, um, another layer there to help strengthen it. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to keep adding. So you just, that's the whole process. You just keep adding fabric and remember, don't go up too high, close to the edge because otherwise you're going to have a hard time. So I'm going to stick with the same color for now as a foundation and just use these ones that I ended up cutting. Make sure you close in on any gaps that there are because otherwise they will become evident when you pull your water bottle or whatever out. You'll see the light <laughs> right through those little gaps. I found some gaps in my first ones and I had to add some extra um, fabric. All these threads, I leave it on there too because I like the threads. So um, again, that's personal preference. Okay, so the first layer has been done and now I'm going to start adding the other layers. Now these other layers are going to be what's going to show more. Okay. So they kind of, now you're starting to, to put in things that are going to be the final look of your bowl. So just keep that in mind as well. of yellow here. Um, I think I want to go up like that. Yeah. Okay. And then this other one is going to go here twist that around i only did two pieces of collage because just in case it doesn't quite work Okay. And you can bring in some threads, okay? So I'm going to bring in some threads. I happen to have a bunch of threads here. And I'm going to 
when they stop sticking to my finger, I'm just going to run some adhesive. I'll say adhesive because it's either the glue or Mod Podge, whatever you have. And I'm going to attach it and just glue it down like so. And it's just to add that different layer of texture. And it's going to, your fingers are going to want to stick to it or they're going to want to stick to your fingers. And it may look like one big something kind of a mess, but it will dry nice. So that is going to dry. <laughs> it's stuck to my finger. <clears throat> okay, so now what we let that dry so we have to let that dry and harden up and what happens is is that um it depends on your climate the temperature in your home the humidity level of where you are so i can't really say for sure the amount of time you're going to need what you want is you have two options now at this point you wait until it completely hardens up Okay, and then you can begin to pull away. That's option one. Option two is you wait until it's halfway, halfway to being dry, halfway to being set. Okay, then you can start to slowly pull this away. Now, you wait until uh, it is semi-hard and pull it away, pull out the bottle then you also have the option if you're wanting to at that point that would be when you would add other embellishments like beads okay so i added these beads and charms and stuff like that when it was semi hard if i waited until it was as hard as it is now for this one i would not be able to get the needle through so i did this when it was semi hard which meant it was set but still kind of pliable and i had to be very gentle with it okay but again, I'm going to add embellishments to this for beads and stuff. So I will videotape that and that'll be included in the video and I will walk you through it. So, um, but just wanted to let you know that if you are wanting that, then get yourself some beads um, or charms and that kind of thing. And then um, I will share that with you. But in the meantime, this has to set for at least three to four hours, at least in my climate, it does. It has to set for three or four hours before this will be ready to be pulled. I'm back. So um, it's been about uh, almost four hours, three and a half hours since I've made this um, and stopped the video. So I can tell it's still uh, wet, but not as wet, but I wouldn't say it's exactly where I wanted either to be to, um, make it easier to release, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, because if I wait any longer, I'm gonna be filming late at night. So another issue I found when I was making the other ones is that when I re was trying to release this from the water bottle too soon, while it was still very much, you know, pretty much wet, is that the inside, um, the first layers of fabric were starting to come uh, being pulled away because I was poking at it with this um, knitting needle. But I'm going to do it, like I said, anyway, because if I, I can't wait any longer, unfortunately, because it is getting late here where I am. So just be mindful of that and... Uh, yeah, just be, if you find that it's just still too wet, then then let it sit for a little bit longer. Okay, so you're going to need something that you can use like a skewer, or in this case, I'm using this knitting needle to kind of gently work it in. 
So you're kind of wanting to slowly start to pry the fabric or the bottle away from the fabric, okay? And you're gonna have to try to make sure you keep the needle as flush against the bottle as possible so that you're not sticking the needle between layers of fabric where you are then pulling away uh, the fabric apart, which I can tell already, I'm already starting to do that. <clears throat> so again, it's because I, I should have waited a little bit longer. The other benefit of waiting a little bit longer is that it will make this process easier uh, to try to get the bottle out. So it is starting to release, it's coming along. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do some fixing up here. And shape it back, press fabric back into place. Now, let me do this. Okay, so use the bottom, squash it, to leave the, the bottom flat so you can kind of nestle it back in there and kind of refit it back a little bit to the best of your ability. So, what I'm going to do, because I've squashed the bottle, so you can see here how the bottom is still pretty much wide enough to kind of fit right in there, but I've squashed or squeezed in the rest of it. So now what that allows me to do then is I'm going to place this upside down like this because I don't want it sitting because it's still soft like that and there's no structure to it anymore because this bottle it is not in its true shape. So um, how would I do that? I, this is what I've done. I've taken a jar that's fairly heavy and I've taken one of my long, longer knitting needles and I've just placed this inside. So it's basically just kind of dangling like that. So I'm gonna have it like that, okay? So that's just a little thing that I've come up with. You can come up with your own thing if you can think of something, but um, now again, ideally this would be a little bit harder, but not, not, not as hard as, you know, this is. Um, this is the point where you would then get some beads and you literally would just start to sew your beads on. Okay, so I'm just gonna place that like that. And I'm going to sew some beads on here. So I'm going to uh, pause the video and gather my beads and then I will come back. So I've gathered some of my beads here and I've already threaded my needle and knotted it at the end. So again, this is just an optional step. You do not have to do this if you are fine with just leaving um, your fabric bowl as is, okay? So keep in mind though, if you are going to do this, that the type of beads you use will be dependent on the size of needle you have, meaning um, how thick your needle is, including how thick the eye hole is. So if this is really wide or thick, then those little seed beads will not fit through. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna come in from inside the bowl and do the first stitch and I kind of try to leave it on the table just to kind of let it have a safe kind of especially when it's this 
pliable. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there so I'm not holding it and, and possibly doing some damage to it. So I've just got the needle through it now and I'm going to get a bead. So I don't want to choose huge beads, obviously. Um, though on these ones I did, I kind of went with some of these like, they almost look remind me of little button ones. I don't remember what they're what they're called, but there's seed beads and there's a little bit bigger seed beads and then there's these here as well. So I guess it's really just up to you. So I'm gonna get some bead here. Let me try this little one that looks like a teardrop. And let it string through. Now, once I've got it strung through, then I'm gonna put the needle back in through the fabric as close to where I originally put it. And then pull tight, gently. Now keep in mind, because it's very wet, it's gonna feel wetter on the inside than the outside because that was the side that obviously wasn't getting any air to dry because the bottle. Um, it's gonna to stick to your fingers and every time you touch it, it's gonna to try to pull that fabric away. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm gonna come out in a different area. And I'm gonna see it's sticking to my fingers and it's wanting to pull the fabric away. Uh, okay, and another one here, let's see. Okay, so I'm done adding the beads. I'm just gonna tie off the, um, the threading here. And just again, my own personal choice, I'm tying it off on the outside as opposed to the inside. So, because I don't mind the threads showing. There we go. Okay, so. There we have it. All right, so I am going to hang this upside down uh, like I was showing you before and let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow I will add some, uh, when it's all nice and hard, then I will add some mark, uh, little marks on it like I did, um, like little mark making, just like I did on this one here with the little dots and stuff. So, uh, there we have it. So, like I said, I'm going to let it harden overnight. So, I will be back again in the morning, and um, we'll take it from there. See you then. We're back, and I this is nice and hard. So, it's now been at least, it's been over 12 hours since I was last in this studio. This is all nice and hard. Um... There's some fabrics that are loose inside, and I knew that because when I was prying it apart um, too soon last night, that it was digging in behind it and pulling it away. But that's fine. Um, I'm not. I wasn't trying to make something perfect anyway, so it's it's still gonna stay in place. So. Um, as you can see, there's beads and everything like that on it, which I shared. Um, you saw me do that, so that's all good. It would have been absolutely difficult to get a needle through this, so I'm glad I, you know, went ahead still and came up here last night to add those beads. So I'm just going to trim this little bit of this thread's a little too long here. Come on. Okay. So at this point, and again, this is optional, you can add some mark making if you want. You could also, and I haven't tried this, so um, enter at your own risk with this. You could also take this time to add 
additional bits of fabric. Now, optional, as is the next thing I'm going to show you. So you can get an acrylic pen, um, a jelly roll pen. You know where I just, okay, I got, I usually get these at Curry's. Obviously, you can get these at Amazon, but you know where else I recently discovered you can get these? And they sold them in a package at Staples. So if you're in Canada at Staples, your Staples may have it. So check, check um, where all the markers and pens, they have a whole section of jelly. Um, these are Jelly Roll. That's the brand. Then they also had this. I don't even know what brand this is. It just says True Red. That can't be right, but it's not red. <laughs> it's uh, obviously blue, but it's a jelly pen. So they had a whole section of a whole multitude of different colors. So anyway, yeah. So that's nice because I have a Staples here in town. So that makes it easier as opposed to having to order from Amazon or, you know, drive all the way to an art store. But get your acrylic pen uh, if you want to. And you can do some mark making if you can find a spot on your fabric. So I can just do some here. Do some here. To get one of these fine point or fine tip, I don't know what it's called, fine tip, fine point. Um, I got these a package of two on Amazon. So they have a little metal needle like tip like this. You put acrylic paint in here. I diluted it with water because the acrylic is too thick. So just a little bit with water. This is white. So I can um, you just give a little squeeze and you can do little dots. And there you go. Now I can do this. So I'm just going to do little dots here and there. And like this, keep going. Okay. But you could do some mark making. In that case, I just went for the option of just adding some dots. Okay, so I think that's it for personalizing your fabric bowl. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned from my mistakes um, and that you give it a go and see what you can come up with. My other one's right here. They're really cute. Um, I just, like I said, hold fabric scraps and thread scraps in here. This one, I'm not sure what I'm going to put into it yet, but I will no doubt think of something. I, Lord knows I have enough things here um, that I can easily use storage for. So other than that, thank you so much for watching and have fun and take care.